Hey, I'm Jay with Ohio Power Tool, and today we are lucky enough to have Rob Robillard, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> in the shop. Hey, Jay, thanks for having uh, me. Glad to be here, guys. So I wanted to just ask you a couple things. Uh, really thank you for coming out, but I wanted to talk to you about some of the cool things you do to really promote the trades to the younger kind of age group. So yeah. they're really kind of, you know, showing it as a career that you should be excited about is getting into the trades. So All right, so about, about six, six or seven years ago, I read something, I don't even know where I was, I read it in a paper or something, it was startling. It was, you know, every, for every five trades person, trades people retiring, there was one replacement. So yeah. the skills gap, everybody's talking about the skills gap. And then I started learning that the average tradesman, tradeswoman, tradesman, is in their 50s. I was yep. like, okay, so what's gonna happen when all these folks retire? Yep. So um, I got together with all the guys at Toolbox Buzz and Concrete Carpenter, and we started thinking, you know, what can we do to, to get involved? So some of the things that we've done is, we, uh, we reached out to NARI, which is a remodeling association, and we basically got involved in their career day, their trade career day. About 500 kids show up on that day, and That's I was great. actually, yeah, and I was really impressed. They're trade school kids. So yeah. the schools that you have buses and buses. Right. I was really impressed with the amount of contractors that uh, volunteered a day to, do, to put a booth up and maybe you display a, a, a tool or a process or maybe yep. you're just giving away uh, resumes and, and, and job applications. And we also do these mock interviews and we teach these kids how to interview for a job. Uh, so that was one thing we do. It's only once a year, so yeah. it's one day a year. Um, my guys and, and I started to visit local trade schools and we donate, as you know, we do tool yeah, reviews. So yep, yep. we get lots of tools and we review these tools. What do you do with all these tools? You can only right. have one or two cordless <laughs> drills. You don't need 20. Um, so we donate them to local trade schools and Makita has been great uh, yep. with us, uh, promoting that with us. Um, and every time we go to a school, we talk to these kids about yeah. a couple things. Awesome. What, do, what do employers like me want to see in expectations in them? And, and we give them tips and mm -hmm. techniques to try to be a good employee and, and promote themselves. And then also, what can they expect from a good employer? And, and I think that dialogue has been great. Um, it also, uh, one of the visits to the trade schools actually got, a, got me a recent employee. Okay. So a young, young lady named Skylar was in the audience of one of these talks that I gave. Um, she reached out to, I gave everybody my web yeah. address, and uh, she reached out to me about two weeks later and asked me if I was hiring for the summer. That's awesome. So we hired uh, Skylar, she's a, a, a local, uh, trade school student, she's a junior, rising senior, and we're gonna make her a um, co-op student. For That's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, call yeah. co-op, right? One week so, on, yeah, one week yeah. off. So she's gonna be a co-op student. Kind coming of intern yeah. thing? Yeah. That's awesome, and then I know, I've seen the Build America, is it that yeah. for, like you've done that Super for several fun. years. That's five years in running. Yeah. Build America is a little bit different, it's not so much trades, because these kids that we're training are not right. trade folks. They're not gonna go in the trades, maybe one out of 50. Yeah. But. Um, Build America is kind of a, a feel-good thing. It's a philanthropic um, fraternity that does a six-week trip across the United States, and they go to camp, six weeks, six camps, and they go to these camps for kids with disabilities. And okay. every camper, every uh, kid has to raise $5,000. That money buys materials, and then these kids show up and they do free labor. So okay. labor, free labor, free money in a form of a grant. Yep. And then what we do is we spend 16 to 20 hours with them before that, and we teach them how to use tools okay. safely, and we teach them how to build some of the projects. Okay, um, so pro like ramps and things? Ramps, and decks, docks, pergolas. Okay. Um, the problem is, Jay, is most of these kids have never used a tool before. <laughs> some of them never put a nail in a board, not yeah. even a nail. So yeah. it's like we have to teach them how to hammer a nail all the way up to using a table saw in 20 hours. Yeah. It's challenging. <laughs> um, I will say this. But they, yeah, I mean, I think, I think what you're doing and a lot of what Toolbox Buzz and, and Concord Carpenter and, and like programs like that do is at a higher level is kind of make it cool to be involved yeah, in, in make it fun. the traits. Like yeah. you're making things, um, you know, how do we get more kind of teenagers yeah. back to even consider trade school? Like we got to reach them younger and make it like fun. I think, I don't know the answer. I mean, I have an idea, but I think the answer lies with parents. And yep. for years, years, my parents included, they used to say, you gotta go to college. Right, yeah. You gotta go to college. They poo-pooed the trades. Yep. You know, only the flunkies and the, and the you know, the, the, the flunk outs and the, and the whatever, the junk, the 
the, the kids that drop out of school, yeah. they're going to be the ones who go to trade school. Right. That's it. And that's not really the case because not no. everybody is set up to work in a cubicle. Not everybody wants to push paper or, or right. type on a keyboard. A lot of folks are hand oriented or they want to sure. use their hands. They, they want to problem solve. And the trades is a great way to get involved with problem solving, fixing things, starting from scratch. or It's, it's just a, it's a cool opportunity. And you've, for me, my office changes every day. I'm in a different yep. environment almost every day. I like that. Yeah, you know? no, it's, I mean, it, it's certainly an amazing way to make money. Yeah. And yeah. you can build a business you and can. you can be as very successful as anybody who you, went you to, you know, got a liberal arts degree. Yep. I mean, it just depends on, on the, the student. I mean, I always go back to when I was 14 years old, I got my first job washing dishes. And me too. There were, you know, <laughs> I moved my way up to busboy, yep. you know, and, you know, the cooks, line, it, at that time, it wasn't a glamorous job. You were a line cook, meh, meh. even in the high end restaurants. We were in a, a very high end restaurant, and it wasn't like this sexy thing. Now there's TV reality shows, shows and reality yeah, shows, yeah. and my little daughter, like, wants to watch the kid reality cooking shows. Oh, wow. And it's like, I, love that. I yeah. want to watch this, you know, and it's, it's like its whole other mindset about being a cook and being a chef, which I think should apply to the trades. I think so too, but I think, you know, I think HGTV has done an okay job with that. I always yep. say that they've done a terrible job for me because people <laughs> think that you can remodel the house in a week or 10 right. weeks. But, um, <laughs> for but, like $2,000. But they certainly glamorize remodeling yeah. and building. Um, I do, I, I really do think it, it goes back to the parents trying to figure out what type of kid they have and then right. exposing that kid to opportunities as they grow up. Right. But then. I think it also lies with us. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, we took on the Trades uh, Career Day, and we do the Build America, and we do these other things. You guys do that program with the inner city youth. Yeah, and so we we do Franklin and Rising, which is, we're just supporting it. I mean, whenever we can, you know, support stuff where we're donating tools or, or actually reaching out to manufacturers to connect them with right. some programs, um, you know, we do that, and basically it's, Kids that are uh, getting through school, you know, struggling, not struggling, but some of them maybe didn't finish high school, right. Um, right. but they're really skilled. They're really good. And you basically give them a little guidance and, and they'll learn the skills and you have to have good mentors to teach them. Yeah. But then they go on and, you know, now some of them are, are skilled tradesmen and it, you know, they get stuck in a situation, not really their fault, but now, you know, they're in their 20s and they're doing great. Right. And it's just, they just need to be shown, given a way out. Well, you mentioned a good thing. You just used the word mentors. And so I think, I think the unions, right? So the carpentry union, the pipe fitters union, welders, yep. all those guys, I think they do a phenomenal job at, at um, apprenticing, training, uh, structure-wise. Yep. Um, but it's not, it's not enough. And they can't do it alone. No. I think that you, me, other folks in the trades, yep. we have to be good mentors. I'll give you an example. I have a couple guys that I've worked with over the years. Um, they were phenomenal mechanics. They were amazing carpenters, better than me, put me to shame, forgotten more than I'll ever know. They were good. They couldn't teach worth yeah. anything. Um, whereas, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. I would slow down a little bit. I would try to think through it. And I used to, this sounds silly, but if I asked you to explain to me how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, how would you do it? If you were talking to a Martian, yeah. you know, you'd, you'd have to be like, okay, you grab the peanut butter in the left hand with your right hand, you yeah. turn the top part only with the left, you know, and you'd have to break yeah. it down into parts. And I do that. So yeah. I take the time to do stuff like that uh, with, with the kids yeah. that we're mentoring. And then every day I'll stop them before they go home. I'll say, hey, nice job. What did you learn today? And I'll put them right on the spot. And if, if I think they're just throwing me something just to get the heck out of there, yeah. I'll stop them and say, no, seriously, what'd you learn today? I want to know. Tell me, and why would you learn about that? Why did you learn about that? Oh, you learned about flashing. Think like a rain, raindrop. You know, don't let overlapping layers, subsequent layers. You know, we, and I break it down and I just, so I showed it to them earlier in the day and just reviewing it verbally later in the end of the day and just trying to yeah. hope that it sinks in. So we need about 20,000 more Rob Robillards all over the country, and then that, we will solve this problem. I don't know if we'd all get along. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a great party, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we solved the problem, Jay, but no. I, I'll tell you what. I, I think that the folks that are watching this, I yeah. bet there's a lot of great ideas out there. Yeah. They could all reach out to a few people. Yeah. Um, Maybe in the comments section. Leave 
Oh, the comment section? Comment oh, that's amazing. Leave us this a is comment. why he's you know marketing genius. Leave us a comment in this video. <laughs> Tell us what you think we can do. Not we, but you too, or all of us in general. How, would, how do we build these trades up, uh, get more young people into the trades, get them more interested in the trades? That's awesome. Yeah, man. Hey, thank you so much for coming out. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Always a pleasure hanging with you, Jay. Thanks, guys.